May 14th, 2021. The Mira family and my wife and I sent my dear friend Kentaro Mira our last wishes. Your head isn't moving at all. Is this real? Even now you look like you'll get up and say, Hmm, Mori-chan? What are you doing, Mira? Hey, what's going on here? Just what should I do, Mira? What's going on? If you haven't guessed already, this is the Kentaro Mira Memorial Manga, created by his longtime friend, Koji Mori. To say that this is an emotional experience is an understatement. This is truly a depressing manga. It really brings to light all the factors and all the emotions that went into Kentaro Mira's death by one of his great friends. And even though it's very sad and it brings a tear to your eye, it's also uplifting as well. You get to see the moments that Koji Mori treasured the most. All his experiences that he drew upon and made him the man he is today. And obviously we get to learn more about the man himself, Kentaro Mura. Seeing this panel of Koji Mori crying in absolute agony from his best friend in life passing away before it was his time. And it's just so hard to put into words. I mean... All he says in this one panel is Mira, and it, that encapsulates everything. I mean, it's just, it, it's enough. And then he recalls the times when he first met Mira and how 40 years went by in just a flash. And it just encapsulates how life is such a brief experience and how we really got to treasure every single moment and, you know, try to make the most of it, but also have some fun along the way, which it seems like Kentaro Mira did a lot of. Now, it's really interesting because they had a conversation in a cafe once in which Mira said that they were sharing one brain. You know, they thought the same way. Way. And um, it, it's kind of an interesting analogy that they were so close that they could literally read each other's minds. And uh, I, I like this little caption here as well that whenever Mira was talking about something enthusiastically, he always had his index finger up like this. So that's an interesting little quirk that he had and uh, something I wasn't aware of. And the fact that if Mira thought they were sharing the same brain, if he felt like they were on that same kind of wavelength, it's a good indication that Koji Mori is taking over Berserk because that means he's kind of in tune with what Mira likes and what Mira wants in terms of his overall vision. So that really bodes well in the fact that Mira told him everything, including the ending, means that we should be getting approximately the same berserk experience we've always got all these years so it just reinforces the idea that this is truly going to be something special and i know we probably shouldn't judge until we see the chapters but the fact that studio gaga is doing the artwork and they did a phenomenal job with duranki and koji mori is on the same brain length as kentaro mira just really means that it should be the Berserk that we all know and love, and it shouldn't really have any major changes that seem noticeable. So it, it gives me a lot of confidence going forward in the future. And then as we progress in the story, we find out that Koji Mori had a little bit of a setback, and he kind of fell out of drawing manga, but um, his friend Kentaro Mira sort of convinced him otherwise, and kind of highlighted all the great aspects of being a mangaka and um, how he kind of got him back into the fold again. And then as they start to become famous mangaka and their series turn into anime and TV dramas, it's kind of interesting because Mira goes to Mori and he tells him to draw me. Basically alluding to the fact that he wants Mori to draw an autobiography about the two of them. Which is really interesting because it almost hints at the fact that Mira knew that Mori was going to outlive him and perhaps his time on this earth would be relatively short. I mean, I don't know if it was just a hunch or if he knew he had heart issues at an early age and he just kind of kept it quiet, but um, kind of a little interesting little dynamic there. I mean, could you imagine if one of your friends just comes up to you one day and is like, hey, you're going to write my autobiography one day. And you're like, what are you talking about? Are you planning on dying or something? Like, that, that's just kind of a weird request. And I, I can't blame Mori for looking a little befuddled there. Like, what do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? And then we go back to the presence again, where he's thinking about the fact that Mira didn't really have any illnesses to speak of. So it's kind of bizarre that he would pass away so soon, especially considering that he made that request. And then on the final page here, we just have a final send-off to Mira where 
He talks about the fact that they wouldn't go 10 days without talking to each other and how even though Mira would have been a first class mangaka regardless of the situation, Mori really attributes his success to being involved with Mira and getting his advice and his confidence and his moral boost was really a benefit to him and his career. Essentially, he equates his life to being a lost cause, so without Mira, he kind of feels like he would have amounted to nothing. So that's a really inspirational story and a phenomenal catharsis by Mori just bleeding all his emotions on the page like that and just remembering his friend and giving credit to where credit is due and uh yeah it, it's a powerful experience you know it's only 23 pages guys i encourage you to read it for yourselves but uh wow i mean especially after hearing the comments about how he said they're one brain and that they're thinking alike really gives me a lot of confidence for berserk going into the future so while sad it was also uplifting in many ways as well so very unique manga very cool and uh, very memorable so uh give it a try guys and i'll catch you on the flip side